Now here's a simple example. Suppose an object starts at x equals 0 meters and it moves at a steady speed to x equals 6 meters and it does this over the course of 3 seconds. Our goal is to graph the motion of this object. So first just picture it in your mind. It starts here at x equals 0 and it's moving to the right which we'll call the positive direction and it moves at a steady speed over here to x equals 6 meters. So it moves just as I drew that arrow at a steady speed along to the right. Now what we'll do is make a graph of position versus time and position we call x and we'll put that on our vertical axis and time t will be on the horizontal axis. And here's the graph. Note that the x versus t graph is a diagonal line. This does not mean that the object moved upward up and to the right. It didn't lift off the ground. The object, remember, moved in a straight line along the x-axis. What this graph shows is where it is at any given moment. For example, at this time, t equals 1, that's this point on the graph. It was at position x equals 2 meters. And at this time, t equals 2, it was at position x equals 4 meters. And at this time, t equals 3, it was at position x equals 6 meters. So all the points along this line show where the object was, x, at any given time, t. Now let's take a look at this graph mathematically. And the first thing we'll do is find the average velocity. And we have a formula for that. Average velocity is the change in distance over the time, the time that it takes to make that change in distance. And in this case, the object moved 6 meters over the course of 3 seconds. So delta x, my displacement there, or how far it went, 6 meters, and delta t was 3 seconds. And you can see that works out to 2 meters per second. That's the average velocity. Next, let's find the slope of the graph. And slope, you probably remember from algebra class, slope is how steep a graph is. So if you have x and y axes, and you have some line here, the slope indicates the steepness of the line. And slope is commonly indicated by the letter m in algebra class. And a lot of people remember this formula. m is delta y over delta x. The, the problem here is we don't have x and y axes. We have a t axis and an x axis. So instead of saying slope is change in y over change in x, we'll use the more general formula. The slope is equal to the rise over the run. And in this case, the rise is the change in x, how high up it went. And the run is change in t, how far over it went. And again, remember, these have units. In algebra, your x and y axes typically didn't have units. But here, we have meters on our x axis and seconds on our t axis. So the delta x, and you just pick two points. I'll pick the end points. The change in x, or the rise, it goes from 0 to 6. That's my change in x, and that's in meters. And the run, it goes from 0 to 3. That's 3 seconds. That works out to 2 meters per second. Now look at these two answers. We got 2 meters per second for the average velocity and 2 meters per second for the slope, and that wasn't a coincidence. They didn't just happen to turn out to be the same number. They are, in fact, the exact same calculation, delta x over delta t, 6 meters over 3 seconds. And that leads us to this important point. The slope of an x versus t graph is the velocity. So if we have a graph of, of an object's position over time, the slope of that graph will be the velocity. And the more you think about that, the more it should make sense. If the object had moved a larger distance, 
this line would have been going up more steeply and we would have had a larger average velocity and a larger slope. The slope of an XT graph is the velocity and that's true for any position versus time graph.